Hello, this is Texas PK, and welcome to our news series, Noobstone, where we take a simplified look at how redstone components work to where it's easier to not only build but understand different redstone contraptions. Today is entirely inspired by the change log of the most recent update to Minecraft Bedrock Edition 1.17.30 in one little line where it mentions that a bug was fixed to this little item, the target block. Now to be honest, I had no idea how this item worked, what it was used for, or why in the world I should care that a target block was fixed. Maybe that's because ever since I started playing, the only thing this was ever used for was decorations. My daughter used it to make an archery range in one of our builds, and it was pretty cool looking. But as far as using it as a redstone component, I had no idea how to use it. And like I said, maybe that's because it wasn't working it when I started playing. But now that it's working, I started trying to figure out how does it work? What is the purpose of it? And what can you use it for? And I'll be honest, most of the different things out there that I've read and looked at and videos I've seen, I didn't really understand. They were a little bit confusing. Now maybe that's just because I'm not as familiar as they are with the terminology as I haven't been playing as long. But there has to be a way to look at this where it's easy to understand so we can start using this cool new block. Now in order to understand what the target block is and how it works, we need to understand some basic concept of redstone. So we're going to start off today taking a look at what redstone is, how it interacts with different types of blocks, and then what the target block can do for us and what ways we can put it to use. So let's get started. The first thing we need to understand is how the redstone dust works. As you notice, it is a linear line of dust. If you were to place a block on either side of it, it does not interact with that block. However, if you place it at the end of a redstone line, it will interact with it because the redstone dust terminates in this block. That means that when we flick a lever or press a button or activate the redstone dust in some way, it is actively powering this block. So what does that mean, that the block is actively powered? It basically means that if you have some device that is activated by a redstone signal, like a redstone lamp, anything touching this powered block will receive power. Now the thing is, is that this will go on any side of this block. However, you'll also notice that any block touching the adjacent block is not receiving power. That is because the blocks that are being powered by this one are being passively powered. That means it has no power in and of itself. It is only being activated by the block next to it. Therefore, any block touching this will not be activated. Any side you put it on, it will not be activated. That is important for us to remember. Now this goes for any block, not just uh, stone blocks or the like. Any block, redstone lamps, even though they are powered by redstone, are considered a standard type block in this regard. You'll notice it is powered, but it also will passively power a block on either side of it. However, the block adjacent to it is not actively powered, and so it does not pass its power to the adjacent block. So the question you might be having now is what types of blocks are standard type blocks and which ones are redstone interactive blocks? Basically any redstone component interacts with the redstone dust. For example, a lever is a redstone component. So anywhere you place it near the redstone line it will interact and redirect the redstone signal. Buttons are also redstone components so they interact with the redstone dust. Repeaters are also redstone components and therefore they interact with the redstone dust. That is true for all of these blocks on this row here. The lectern, the daylight sensor, the jukebox, redstone torch, lightning rod, tripwire hook, piston, sticky piston, observer, redstone block, and redstone comparator. Now these blocks, whether the, the chest the hopper, or any other standard type block, we're going to be using these for an example a little later, do not interact with the redstone dust. They may be powered by redstone components, but they do not interact and redirect redstone signals. So let's take a look at how this works then. As we said, standard blocks 
do not redirect the signal, and so therefore this block is not powered by the redstone signal. However, a repeater is a redstone component, so it will redirect the signal and will power the adjacent block. Now a repeater, if it has any signal input into it, outputs a full signal strength of 15. So this block is fully powered. That means that the block to the right, the block to the left, the block beyond it, and the block above it and below it will be passively powered as well. Of course, adjacent blocks are not. And that is true for any of the other blocks. They will redirect and take power. Let's try it with the piston. As you can see, if you were to place your piston to the side of this, whether it's this way, or this way, or even this way, it redirects the signal. The only direction that this does not work is when you have it facing into the redstone dust. Any of the other sides that touch it will redirect it. The same is true for any of the other components that we see here. The observer, for example, does not interact with it on the front, or the side, but only on the output, which is this little dot on the back of the observer. I would recommend experimenting with all the different components and you can see how they interact with the redstone dust, but those are the two that have unique interactions with how they line up with the redstone dust, which leaves us with one last redstone component, the target block. Now the target block is very interesting. And it's kind of unique. It acts a lot like a standard block, but it also interacts with redstone the same way a redstone component would. Let me show you what I mean. If we place a target block next to the redstone dust, you'll notice it redirects the redstone signal into the block. However, it also acts like a standard block, meaning that it is now powered and gives off a passive signal to all the different sides. But you will notice it does not give a full signal to the, any of the blocks. They are passively powered, therefore the lamps on either side are not activated. So in this way it's very similar to a standard block, except it's interacting like a repeater. This has many implications on how the target block can change the way in which we do different circuits, especially things like sorting systems or logic circuits or other different components that may be more complicated that have to be very bulky. This will make it more streamlined and easy to do. Let me give you one example of what I'm talking about, and hopefully it will make it clear what I mean. Now what I've done over here is I've made a line of 15 redstone lamps with one repeater into each and every one of them. Now if you were to flick this lever you would see all 15 of them light up because the redstone signal would reach the end of the redstone dust with a signal strength of 1 because it goes down by 1 each and every step of the way. And even if it has only a single signal strength the repeater still sees it and so it fully activates the adjacent block. But what happens if you want to have a graduated signal. Now a comparator is a very special device. It will detect how full something is and will give a corresponding percentage of the maximum output signal as its output. So for example, if this hopper is completely filled with items, you will see that it has a full signal strength of 15 and every single redstone lamp will be lit. But if it only has four stacks filled, you'll notice that it does not reach the end of the signal. And you'll notice that only the first 12 repeaters are powered. Now if you wanted to have an indicator light showing how full your hopper was, this would not be accurate because the repeater fully powers this block. So it passively powers the block to the left, which should not have been powered in the first place. So prior to target blocks, if you wanted to have an output like this, you had to do something like this, where every other block had an extra repeater in it, in order to space the redstone lamps out so they don't passively power their neighboring redstone lamp. Now you see that it perfectly lines up 
where the number of light lamps that are turned on are exactly what they should be. However, this requires an additional seven repeaters to make this work. There are other ways to do it a little more efficiently, but it's just as convoluted. But you'll see it does work. We can put in partial stacks, and you'll see that it goes and will light up a total of now 13 lamps, exactly the way it should. But with the introduction of the target block, this changes everything. Let me reset our lamps and I'll show you what I mean. Now as you can see I have replaced every single one of the repeaters with a target block. And you will also see that at every single one of them redirects the redstone dust into the respective target block. You will also will notice that because our hopper is completely full all 15 redstone lamps are powered. But if we were to remove one of them you'll now see that only 12 of them are powered. And if we remove another stack, it should go down to 9, which it does. Remove another, it goes down to 6, and remove another, it goes down to 3. Remove some, it goes down to 2. Remove most of the others, it goes down to 1. And when you remove the last remaining one, it goes down to zero. Not only is this much simpler and cleaner, taking up less space, it also is less resource intensive. That yes, a target block requires four redstone dust and one hay bale, whereas a repeater requires three redstone dust, two of which go towards redstone torches and some stone, but you need fewer of these. All in all, this is pretty cool. Like I said, it has implications for all sorts of different devices. As a matter of fact, I recently built a sorting system for my Let's Play World, and that was before this update came out. I probably would have used the target block for that instead. I plan on putting out a tutorial on how to build that sorting system, and I probably will do it with a modified version of it using the target block. It makes it a little more reliable, a little faster, because as I mentioned, repeaters have a one-tick delay. Target blocks have no delay. They're instantaneous. Don't believe me? Let me show you real quick. Okay, I have a very basic comparison here for us to see. At one tick, it's almost impossible to see because a tick is very fast. Let me show you. I don't know if you could see it. Part of me thinks I could, but it's so fast it's hard to tell for sure. However, if we change it to two ticks, it becomes a little more obvious. You can see it. Three ticks, very obvious. And four ticks it's certainly clear. Let's try that one more time at one tick and see if we can see it. It's hardly distinguishable, but it is there. I'll be honest, I'm not sure I could see it at one tick, but at the two and the three and the four it's there. And knowing how they work, you know there is a delay. It's part of the design. Sometimes that's important. Sometimes it's good to have the delay. But there's other times where you don't want a delay. Sorting systems are one of them. And I'm sure there are many others where a delay would be good and many others where a delay is bad. But that's the target block. Hopefully that's helped you understand it a little better. It took me a while to understand. Fortunately I have a little bit of a background in electronics and circuitry programming. So I was able to understand how it worked once I got my mind wrapped around how a target block actually interacts with the redstone dust. So I hope it helps you out. I hope you were able to put this into use somewhere. Like I said, I'll probably be putting out a tutorial on how to use this in a sorting system to improve performance over using some of the other methods and also do it a lot cheaper. But with that, that's all for now. Again, I'm Texas BK. I hope to see you again soon. But until then, be good to each other. Bye.